This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Stick around to hear more about the discount they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, today I wanna to talk about lithium because more and more, this one seemingly innocuous rare earth metal is becoming a bottleneck of global technology. That's a very bold statement, I know, but given the chance, I'd like to make my case and discuss why lithium is poised to become one of the most valuable substances in human history. To start with, we need a baseline. According to various estimates, there are roughly 22 million tons of mineable lithium on planet Earth. Obviously, that measurement is imprecise. The true number is likely far higher, but the observable total is currently deemed to be in excess of 20 million tons, meaning that we likely have, at least for now, a healthy potential supply of the metal ready to be extracted. That's a good sign. However, to really explain the impending market tides, we need a few more puzzle pieces. First, Tesla batteries for the Model S in particular, which is a 70 kilowatt hour pack, according to nearly every estimate I could find, contain roughly 63 kilos of lithium carbonate. That's a lot, but one key distinction to make here is that lithium carbonate is not the same thing as lithium hydroxide. Lithium hydroxide, widely accepted as a long-lasting and superior alternative, actually composes just 12 kilos of a Tesla battery, the rest being composed of what's called LCE, or lithium carbonate equivalent. Now, for the sake of math and to further demonstrate the central pillar of my argument here, let's assume just 10 kilos of lithium hydroxide are used in a single Tesla battery pack, not 12. 10 kilos would be roughly 22 pounds, but again, let's round it down. 20 pounds of lithium per battery. With that figure in mind, we can start to build a larger picture. How many electric vehicle sales in the United States right now? How many total vehicle sales are there? And what percentage of all vehicle sales do electric versions comprise right here, right now? Surprisingly, this appears to be the easy part. As of 2021, Tesla sold roughly 300,000 vehicles annually with a very strong upward trend. It's a growing business model from what it looks like. 300,000 times 20 is about 6 million pounds, translating to just 3,000 tons, which is actually more like 2,700 metric tons, which is, give or take, 3% of the global lithium mining pipeline in 2021, as per Statista. Cool. Tesla is currently consuming roughly 3% of the annualized lithium supply as both electric vehicle sales and the overall ability of lithium dramatically increase year over year. Everything looks good so far, but what if we start to expand our scope? In truth, Tesla has enjoyed what's called a first mover advantage in the electric vehicle market for years. Having been the driving force behind massive growth in the sector, Tesla is certainly a major player, but a further broken down quarterly examination shows that the overall electric vehicle sales growth in America is actually far higher. As per statistics from the first and second quarters of 2022, overall electric vehicle unit sales are approaching 200,000 per quarter, which would mean 800,000 vehicles annually. Obviously not enough to threaten the entire global supply of lithium, but larger estimates change the underlying picture. Instead of 300,000 vehicles, we're looking at 800,000. 800,000 vehicles at 20 pounds per battery means 16 million pounds in total, then becoming 8,000 tons per year, which is actually 7,200 metric tons or thereabouts. Still a very small overall percentage of the mining supply, but now we see that domestic American electrical vehicle sales for low commercial class personal transport categories, this is a lot, I know, but we'll get through it, is at roughly 8% of global 2021 lithium production levels, Again, not enormous, but clearly growing rapidly. Side note, actually, a sponsor. The internet is a very scary place, but thankfully, I have Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, virtual private network, offering defense against certain types of phishing attacks, malware, DNS tunneling, DDoS attacks, you name it, and also shields you from inevitable and constant data harvesting, as well as tracking, from big tech companies. Basically, it does a whole lot of things, and it's very valuable to have. Even further, for those that don't care about security and simply care about entertainment value, which Surfshark does have, Surfshark can unlock additional content on streaming websites, like Netflix, for example, because geographic location is actually tied directly to licensing agreements. Simply change your region and enjoy increased options in your video library. Surfshark can get you around regional censorship, such as government restrictions on websites, which is happening more and more these days, and also offers encryption, IP protection or modification, and so much more. I'll keep it short, sweet, and to the point. If you click the link down below right now using promo code ECHELON, you can get 83% off and three full months free. Again, that's promo code ECHELON for 83% off and three entire months for free if you click the link down below in the description right now. Big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the channel. Okay, what's next? Next is a projection of market share. Right now, all electric vehicle sales combined, in the United States at least, would be just 800,000 units annually across the lightweight category. But what if that market share continued to rise? Overall passenger vehicle sales in the United States currently fluctuates between 10 million and 17 million per year. 
allowing us to assume that if a 50% market share was achieved, hypothetically, in the worst economic conditions possible, it would likely mean at least 5 million vehicles per year, unless we see a dramatic collapse in the number of people buying cars. 50% of current annual sales, conservatively, utilizing lowball Model S values, and if I am wrong about any of this math, please do comment down below, I'll try and issue a correction or something, but it seems to check out right now. So anyway, 50% of current annual sales would be 5 million units, which means roughly 45,000 metric tons of lithium per year. That's 45%, loosely speaking, of the 2021 global mining supply, just for American consumer vehicle purposes at 50% market share, which a substantial cohort of politicians, at least in the United States, and elected officials are pushing for. Some are actually pushing to ban all internal combustion engine car sales as early as 2035, but honestly, that's a pipe dream. Now let's get into the really interesting stuff. Tesla, love them or hate them, and for sure there's a large group in either of those categories, is currently attempting to pilot and promote their new offering, which is a Tesla semi-truck. These trucks are, as far as I can find, class 8 commercial vehicles with very different specs compared to the original cars. While official numbers or blueprints aren't yet available, at least not that I could find, maybe someone out there can, we do have a detailed estimate from Tesla Roddy, which seems very credible, and derives conclusions from the fact that Tesla semi-trucks have four individual motors, each derived initially from the Tesla Model S blueprint. That's great, because we can then estimate the amount of lithium, owing to the fact that we already did the math for Tesla Model S cars, which came out to a charitable figure of roughly 20 pounds per battery. Four battery packs in a Tesla Semi, four times the lithium, once again, conservative estimate of about 80 pounds per truck. However, this is where it gets a little more tricky. Class 8 truck sales in the United States alone surpassed 180,000 in 2020. That number may have mildly fluctuated, I guess, but assuming that Tesla or other competing companies intend to also capture even just one quarter of that market, which seems feasible if the trend continues, this would be another 45,000 electric vehicles, each with four battery packs, ultimately leading to another 1,600 tons of annual lithium. For those keeping track, we're now almost precisely at 50% of the global 2021 mining rate for lithium just in the United States, while only reaching 50% passenger vehicle adoption for annual sales and 25% of commercial Class 8 trucks. But wait, because Class 8 commercial vehicles aren't the only type. Class 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 trucks are an even larger industry, with well over 500,000 units being sold in 2020. I can't precisely calculate how much lithium each of these individual classes or models might require, but if we assume another conservative adoption target of maybe just 20% this time, one-fifth, that would be 100,000 more battery packs per year, each of which has a variable amount of lithium between 20 and 80 pounds, give or take, which would be almost another 1,000 tons. Small values, relatively speaking, but starting to add up fast, and we're not even close to being done. All of this was just America, but the electric vehicle craze is not isolated to just one country or nation. According to EVVolumes.com, BYD, a Chinese electric car or vehicle manufacturer, is even larger now than Tesla, while EV sales domestically for China, at least, surpassed 3 million in 2022. Again, specifications aren't exactly public here, and it's a little more difficult to learn about Chinese corporate decision-making or internal processes, but I find it incredibly doubtful that China will allow the US to dominate the electric vehicle space or the industry of battery technology without a substantial fight. Right now, China is producing roughly 3 million electric vehicles per year, which translates to an additional 27,000 annual tons of lithium loosely speaking, and that's at their current market share, let alone if they advance to any larger value, or any other country for that matter. China sits at between 24 and 21 million annualized vehicle sales, which means that if electric alternatives became even 50% of that, it would be an additional 63,000 tons of lithium per year, at least in the short term, before recycling technology can take hold and mitigate the need for new lithium with each consecutive battery cell. To recap here, that's 50% of the American passenger vehicle market, 50% of the Chinese passenger market, 25% of the American Class 8 truck market, and 20% of the Class 3 to 7 American truck market going electric, and we're already way beyond the entire annual mining supply of lithium for 2021. Here's the part where it gets really wild. All of this assumes that the only demand for lithium is contained within two tiny subgroups of two global economies. This makes no mention of the fact that before the electric vehicle craze, which is 
kind of a it's, it's pandemonium right now as everybody tries to go electric and clean and green and whatever the lithium industry was already demanding at least 30,000 tons annually for smartphones personal computer batteries and a multitude of other electronic applications thereby meaning that we are not on track to just surpass the amount of lithium we are currently mining we are on track to blow it out of the water completely now let's bring Europe into the equation that's 11 million more car sales by year where any percentage of that shifting to electric alternatives and some already is means lithium lots and lots of lithium thousands of tons in fact which can be piled right on top of the already dramatically underproducing mines that likely cannot keep up with production demands regardless of what they do in the future let's go rapid fire here for a minute there are governmental programs in America to make even our public transportation and bus infrastructure electric Massachusetts wants to have electric buses but doesn't even rank in the top six states for number of buses to begin with the top six states those being California New York Texas Florida Pennsylvania Ohio contain over 400,000 buses which if even a fraction were converted or manufactured from brand new would be many thousands of tons more in lithium every year that currently is not being produced in large enough quantities the number of batteries we will need to make or produce just for the vehicle industry of a few countries will be more than quadruple overall lithium mining industry demand as it stands right now from 2021 with even a partial adoption rate but it doesn't even stop there now we get into the realm of residential solar panels which is infinitely more complicated yes but also very critical to understand residential solar panels through companies like Sunrun for example have excellent underlying personal value but mass adoption of solar panels and subsequent battery storage would mean that some unknown number of homeowners are now competing for the very same lithium as the car industry with over 80 million detached single-family homes in America even a minuscule percentage of battery storage adoption in real estate would further contribute to lithium demand pushing it into the stratosphere right now companies like Sunrun can't even get batteries to install they just simply can't but do we think that stops them from wanting to does that decrease the demand no it's just that they can't get them right now the demand is not going anywhere this is where we have to make a pivot because the number of examples showcasing why lithium demand already has and will continue to outpace mining capabilities are never ending however there's another angle to all of this that I think if my guess is right at least is about to blow up in America's face as activists clash in a battle of moral outrage over cultural sensitivity versus climate sensitivity according to United States geological survey data there are roughly 7.9 million tons of identified lithium in the country that's great right the U.S is a major reserve holder globally of lithium which should help us get through the coming shortage where that shortage might have dramatic negative impacts on our own technology industry right eh, wrong turns out according to analysis from Morgan Stanley Capital that 79 percent over three quarters of all known lithium in America is within 35 miles of Native American reservations what's more the largest individual lithium mining project America has which would be responsible for roughly 80,000 tons of lithium carbonate annually by itself I think is positioned at Thacker Pass which is a sacred Native American location which also happens to be the site of a Native American massacre Thacker Pass has become an activist focal point over recent years and while it certainly isn't the only site where lithium could be mass mined in America it is by far the largest remember 79 percent of all lithium reserves in the country are within 35 miles of Native American reservations but so is 89 percent of our copper 68 percent of our cobalt and 97 percent of our nickel all of which are critical to the exponentially growing electric vehicle market and battery storage industries here's where it all comes together lithium mining is incredibly bad for the environment most of the world's lithium comes from a single geographic location called the lithium triangle where Chile Bolivia and Argentina meet but that region is now plagued by industrial mining and water shortages due to the fact that a tremendous amount of water is required to successfully refine or extract usable lithium according to scientific consultations by Dan watch somewhere between 400 liters and 2 million liters can be required for every kilo of lithium which means that even with the most charitable assumption humanly possible a single electric vehicle will require at least bare minimum 4,000 liters of water to refine high value lithium and another tens of thousands to extract lithium carbonate that kind of water processing such as the brine pools and a massive amount of hydrochloric acid which is also required in the process can radically impact surrounding wildlife and residents meaning that the destructive nature of rare earth mining is now pointed like a missile 
directly at the Native American population of the United States, while the cost of transporting these insane quantities of water for refinement will either dramatically increase the cost of mining and extraction itself, which is already sky high, before we even hit the exponential curve, or lead to a situation where surrounding land in close proximity to the lithium mines becomes basically uninhabitable. For reference, in the lithium triangle right now, mining requires roughly half a million gallons of water per ton of lithium extracted, and has now consumed over 65% of the region's water supply. Quotes from Euronews read as follows, South America's lithium triangle communities are being sacrificed to save the planet. Here's the reality. Right now, lithium mining in particular, but also cobalt with slave labor in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, as well as nickel and copper on top of that, is out of sight, out of mind. We don't see it, we don't feel it, we don't taste it, but as the industry continues to grow and devours everything in its path, the rapidly increasing demand for lithium will fuel a gold rush of global proportions, where America will, once again, almost certainly be faced with a choice about pursuing the concept of green agendas and clean energy, or forcefully relocating slash environmentally destroying Native American tribes and land. Even in the most mild of adoption curves, if the modern industrialized world decides to swap oil for lithium, there will be severe consequences, both environmental and humanitarian, as well as a tremendous amount of opportunity as the corporate gold rush of lithium mining and extraction takes off into the stratosphere, like the Pennsylvania oil rush before it, or the California gold rush before that, or any number of resource adoption curves that have led society to where we are right now. It's the same thing, just a different name. Humans have always, like clockwork, since the dawn of civilization in fact, pillaged the environment to get what they want. It's just that this time, the activists get to pretend, on the surface level, disingenuously, that what they are doing is good for everyone, instead of just uniquely terrible in a new and different way. That's it. If you want to support, check out the links down below, primarily Locals and Patreon, but also Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative, social media, merchandise, also the video sponsor, of course, etc, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.